Hello everybody, my name is Peter Klapper from the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent in Canterbury and in this video cast I want to, to discuss the concept of standard error of the mean. This is a very important statistical concept and uh, it confuses a lot of students unfortunately. Now, standard errors give an indication of how reliably a statistic, which is derived from a sample, can estimate a, the parameter of a population. And we can say that the larger the standard error, the less reliable the estimate. Usually we take only one sample which contains a number of observations and I will explain that in an example in a minute. However, in theory we could do this loads and loads of times. So we could take 100 samples, we could take 1000 samples which all have the same number of observations. For each sample we could calculate its mean and its standard deviation. For example, we could say we would like to measure the height of all students in the University of Kent, but it would be rather impractical to measure all 20,000 students. So we just simply take a sample of four students and calculate its statistics. We measure their heights and the standard deviation. And from this measurement we try to estimate how these parameters work for the entire population of students. So, for example, we find that in this particular uh, case uh, we have four observations and that would be our sample size. That's the sample size. Uh, we find that uh, the average height of the student, the mean of the sample is say 179 centimeters and the standard deviation of this sample say is 10 centimeters. We now can calculate the standard error of the mean. And the way it works is it is usually called SEM or it is also abbreviated as SEX bar. Both mean exactly the same. And this is calculated as standard deviation divided by the sample size by the number of observations. So in our case here this would be standard uh, deviation is 10 centimeters divided by square root of 4 and that of course is uh, 5 centimeters. So our standard error in this case standard error in this case would be 5 centimeter. And of course we could do that with another sample. So in the first sample, and I call that x1, we had 179 centimeter, standard deviation was 10 centimeters. We could do that with another sample of four students, so that would be our second sample, x2. Let's say we get 177 centimeters with a standard deviation of 9.8 centimeters. And again, we could uh, again calculate here the standard error so the standard error for this population for, for this uh, sample would be again s divided by the number of observations so this would be 
eight centimeter. And again, we have four observations. We took four students divided by square root four, and that would give us a standard error of 4.9 centimeter. And we could do that as often as we like. And what we probably would get is we would get a distribution of our sample means. So distribution, distribution of our sample means of the different x bars. So uh, what we will find is probably something like that. If we did this experiment loads and loads of times, so here are our um, sample means and here is the frequency. And if we did that, we would probably see that uh, this is more or less normally distribu distributed. So our sample means are show a normal distribution. So the important thing that I want you to uh, take away from uh, this uh, is that you can calculate the standard error of the mean. You can also calculate other um, uh, parameters or statistics, I should say. You could, for example, calculate the standard error of the variance. But in this case, the standard error of the mean is the standard deviation of a sample divided by the number of observations in the sample. And I really want you to uh, remember that when you do statistics. Thank you very much for watching and I hope this makes sense.